Afternoon guys, hope you're having a good Saturday. Um, just finished work for the day and unfortunately the groaning, creaking, steering, whatever you want to call it, um, on the vehicle has returned with a bang. Um, now, I did actually have in one of the comments regarding, I believe, um, someone was saying about that the um, drive shafts need to be re-greased and such forth. Um, I would have a thought, thought that when those drive shafts were actually put in when I was rotated, they would have been re-greased anyway. I wouldn't have put them in dry, surely. Um, but anyway, um, point that uh, that matters here is that I've done about 250 miles and it's gone back to what it was. Um, and the steering, whilst it's still heavy and weighty at speed, like I said before, it's still very, very light. Um, and it's making... Um, like a, vi a vibration through the rack. Um, sometimes when you like, can feel it, it feels very bitty. Um, I still think the rack's knackered or it's on its way um, and it shouldn't be happening at these kind of miles. Um, so I'm just gonna put the aircon on because it's really, really warm here today in the UK. Um, so basically what my portal call is now, there's no point uh, ringing the dealership now because the service doesn't open I believe on Saturday and especially getting on towards um, one o'clock. Um, so I'll have to ring them first thing Monday and get this booked in again. Um, so I'll actually replay um, the groaning noise which is actually a lot worse at the end of this clip. And uh, yeah, so not good news to be back off the road again. Um, just on an end note guys, just and girls, the... Um, some people are probably wondering um, if, if, if these vehicles are worth getting and I would say to you um, if you're using this vehicle um, in our industry I'd 100% recommend them even I've had problems with it at the moment it could change in years to come but right here and now every vehicle will have teething problems and I appreciate um, from what I've seen regarding all the issues I'm actually having on the front end, I still stand by what I've said, I'm not going to keep repeating it, but I still think they haven't upgraded the parts for this kind of power output on the front end of this vehicle. Um, if you're going to be driving this vehicle um, for work, in a working or a commercial capacity, um, my advice would for you would be, and this is probably what Nissan probably thought people were going to do, would drive these exactly the same as they did the 24s and the 30s. Hence, very, very sedately and try and maximise the um, fuel efficiency or electricity efficiency out of the battery in terms of kilowatt, um, miles per kilowatt hour. Um, but when you've got access to this much performance, even if you just leave this in standard, even in eco, it's still a brisk car. Um, and in all honesty, there could be a debate where people could say um, if Nissan actually limit the power output of these vehicles in the future or do a software update, um, people could say, well, I bought the car knowing that it was actually a rapidly fast car. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's in the um, brochure in terms of uh, how fast it goes and that could influence people's uh, buying because um, um, it's not relevant to me. Um, and it's good fun um, but like I say in a working environment I don't think there's going to be a problem um, my suggestion to you like I said a minute ago is just drive it sedately um, I don't think there'd be a problem even if you accelerate so you have to accelerate it hard I mean even on my test drive when I was with um, Derek Clark and a lorry pulled out on a carriageway and I had to literally overtake the overtaking of this vehicle is absolutely superb um, and whether or not that needs to be limited back as well, so basically you're putting all the power down, I don't know. Um, I really haven't got the answers, guys. But all I can say to you is there's so many other benefits of owning a BEV. And this isn't just applicable to Nissan, this is all BEVs in a working environment. The savings, um, the medicinal benefits, the quietness, everything. There's so many uh, plus points, it's, I'd have to list them probably for the next hour. Um, so yes I would totally recommend them um, and if you've got one on order um, I believe Aaron actually replied Aaron my advice to you is I would still go ahead with the order um, they are a very good car I've had virtually apart from these creeks and the steering overall um, I've not actually been forced off the road yet touch wood 
um, with a breakdown. So that's a plus point, and you have to look at things like that. Um, yes, it's annoying having the groaning noises, and you know, although it's roadworthy, um, these are probably just uh, teething problems that we're just going to have to live with. Um, all I'm hoping, uh, hoping is, is that if I do stick with Nissan uh, in years to come and stick with the Leafs, I'm hoping that they, the people who actually make the components for Nissan, if Nissan don't make the components for this vehicle, they actually uprate them for future models and or make them retrofitted for these vehicles. Maybe that's an option that they may have to go down because as I've mentioned to Ryan at EV Opinions, I've texted him a week or so ago, I think this is just the beginning. Once the domestic market catches up with some of the miles that us in the private iron tax industry are putting on these vehicles, you're all going to have the same problems. Um, and it can end up being a very costly exercise for Nissan. Anyway, guys, enough for the uh, going on about this. Um, I'll keep you updated when I get um, notification for when the car goes back in again, and hopefully we'll get something resolved on this. Um, and I will speak to you guys soon, and have a good weekend. Bye for now.